I start my talk in the darkness. As you know, I'm the CEO of the Rotterdam Eye Hospital. And we are treating 140,000 patients yearly. And every eye patient is afraid of becoming blind, afraid of the darkness. Perhaps you have the same feeling now. And our patient philosophy is based on fear reduction. I will talk about that later, but now my topic is about safety. How safe are you as a patient in a hospital? You see here, ultra safe, regulated and dangerous. You see the airline industry, you see driving and mountain climbing. Where do you think hospitals are positioned? Please raise your hands if you think they're ultra safe. Nobody? Regulated, like driving. Okay, or dangerous, like mountain climbing. Well, I bet they can go home now. Because it's very dangerous, as you see, the US hospitals. In the US, 90,000 people die due to preventable medical errors. And this, this is known since 1999. And in the Netherlands, 2,000 people die yearly. And you see in traffic, it's only 675. Commercial airline is very safe. Only 600 people die in crashes worldwide per year, worldwide. And why is the airline industry so safe? This has to do with teamwork. The team flies and the captain is responsible. But this has not always have been the culture. This is a lesson learned from Tenerife in 1977. What was happening? A KLM 747 on the runway ready for takeoff collided with a Pan Am 747, just landed. 583 people died, the biggest crash in airline history. And there were many problems. The main airport was closed on the island. And on the small uh, airport in Tenerife, there were too many planes. There was poor visibility. But it was human failure, as often, that caused the disaster. And this was about hierarchy in the cockpit. It was about culture. In the airline industry, the captain was the boss. This is my plane. And the crew obeyed the captain. And you don't contradict the captain. So what was happening? The KLM, ready for takeoff, was on the runway. The captain said, we have a go. But the crew was not certain, but nobody said anything. And we know the result. As a solution, the airline industry started with what they call crew resource management. And these are trainings about teamwork, leadership, human factors, and about hierarchy. Not the captain here and the crew here, but more like this. And the culture changed from I am the boss to the team flies. And then with further standardization, automation, use of checklists and continuous training, the airline industry is very safe. In healthcare, we are in, a, we are in the pre tenery phase. A doctor saying, I do it my way, should be transformed to a team player. We do it together. It takes 11 years to become a specialist. But after graduation, <clears throat> you're not tested anymore. As highly trained professional, you don't like standardization or the use of checklists. And don't talk about automation in hospitals, because that's a disaster. The Rotterdam Eye Hospital, I worked there since 20 years, is known as an innovative hospital. And with my colleague, Kay Sol, we developed a concept for innovation, and we call it the secret of the eyeball. I have them here. And the first secret is learn from others, look at other industries. So we look at KLM, at Toyota, Delta Lloyd, and try to implement ideas from that industries. And the second is learn from the peers. And the peers are the best eye hospitals in the world. So we are a member of the American Association. We founded the European Association and the World Association. And this is our World Wide Web. We like traveling, Case and I, so you see we have a lot of destinations to go. 
But it's very important for innovation. We are running a benchmark program between these hospitals from Rotterdam. But the most important thing is the exchange of staff members. So we're sending nurses to Singapore to talk with their colleagues and learn and bring the knowledge back to Rotterdam. And today, 30 people from Stockholm are in Rotterdam talking with our nurses. And this is a very strong way for innovation because the nurse is our consultant, not PricewaterhouseCoopers. Too expensive for us. But we are not Toyota. We are dealing with eye patients. And as an eye patient, you are afraid of becoming blind. So our patient's philosophy since 20 years is fear reduction. Because when the patient is less afraid, the healing process is going better, and you also can, can take care of your safety and what's going on with you in the hospital. And the first thing is information. When a patient is well informed, there are no surprises. And the second thing, you have to come with somebody else. And the family member is going with you to the OR and to the consulting room. Two here, more than one. And the third aspect is transparency. We show everything, we have no secrets, the doors are open. And if you have cataracts in our fast track cataract center, you can watch live surgery. We show everything. If there are complications, we show it. And after surgery, the doctor comes immediately to the family member and the patient to explain what went wrong. And patient satisfaction scores 9.1 on the scale from 1 to 10. So the concept is working. So now to safety. We are working with the airline safety system since 10 years in Rotterdam. Because the airline is very safe, but also a doctor can identify himself with a pilot. There's glamour in the OR and glamour in the cockpit. We also talk to the oil industry, it's not working. <laughs> and the central focus of our program is the change of culture from I, the doctor, to the team. And we use team resource management for that. And this training, like in the airline industry, is given by a pilot trainer. And this is about the same thing about leadership, teamwork, the hierarchy again, not the doctor here and the nurse here, but more equal. And we have three classroom sessions. This was ophthalmologists, anesthesiologists, resident nurses, and recovery employees. And that's a problem, because doctors are not interested in classroom sessions, because they are very busy. It's an idea of the management. We are not very popular as managers. And they have to do the training with nurses. And also, doctors are not employees of the hospital. So what we do, we try to seduce doctors. <laughs> Seduction, that's our big secret. And how do we seduce doctors? Do you have any ideas? Sorry? <laughs> this is the seduction. After three classroom sessions, we go to the flight simulator, and a real one, where they're training pilots, and we go there in the evening. And that is very interesting, because nobody has ever been to a simulator. So the doctor has no advantage on the nurse in knowledge. The pilot trainer is there, and the story is two pilots get ill, and four passengers take over the control. You are connected with Schiphol Tower. You are above the island of Texel. You look out of the window, you see Texel. And the idea is to make a landing. And then we put the nurse in the seat of the captain and the professor in the seat of the co-pilot. There are instructions coming from the tower, and when you have to lose you have to use checklist and teamwork, and otherwise you crash. And you see it, and that's very scary. But to the relief of everybody, we have the reset button, and the reset button, <laughs> the reset button brings you back to life. You look out of the window, you see Texel, and you can try again. <laughs> and this is a very good instrument for change. 
because doctors and nurses talk about this to their colleagues. And it's also a fascinating experience, and you, don't, you remember it like you remember your good teacher at school. And we also introduced the black box. This is our black box. Continuous recording in the OR is not possible due to legal and privacy problems, but the pilot trainer is in the OR and is filming a whole morning session. Not the surgery itself, but what's going on in the OR. And afterwards, we discuss the tape with the team on safety aspects. And this is also very effective because you see yourself and your team working. But a change of culture takes time, and we make progress, but slowly. And safety training should be included at medical school, but that's still very difficult. So we need a new instrument, and therefore we're here today. Namely, we want to empower the patient. Because it's your disease, it's your body, it's your life. And this is what I want to promote today, empowerment of the patient. And empowerment is only possible when you're not nervous. Because you're not nervous, you don't pay attention to things. So therefore, our fear reduction philosophy is important. And empowerment means, for instance, that you should ask your doctor if he has washed his hands before examining you. Because doctors don't like to wash their hands. They only wash their hands when they think they can be infected themselves. <laughs> the patient should ask the doctor how many surgeries he has done. And what is the outcome? And if you have a green pill, and normally you get a red pill, you should ask, is this correct? The patient journey begin, starts at home. Like you, your holiday is starting at home. So we try to inform the patient about his journey. So he knows what to expect. So he knows his flight plan. So he can be in control. We have experience with giving patients after retinal surgery a checklist of items so the patient can check if the nurse doesn't forget something. Empowerment is not easy, but it can work and it can be a strong driver for culture change. That's my idea. And what I want to do today is ask Q900 here to be a promoter of that idea. Because some of you are a patient, but we all become patients in the future. So spread the message. And I, here I have eyeballs, <laughs> our secret. I will throw it in the audience. And when you get one, you'll be super promoter. <laughs> because the eyeball is a very strong communication tool. <laughs> Don't get hurt. No, I don't go upstairs. <laughs> Thank you and stay healthy.